you know, it's like, this is not just physics that's happening over there. This is what you're made of. You know, you're connected, like literally all the information of every point in the universe is in every point of your body. <laughs> literally. And it starts to be able to explain things, psi phenomena, like why somebody can, you know, have a remote viewing experience of something that's way over there that they've never been to, or all these things. It's because the information is present. You have access to it, right? So now we can start to understand this, and that's why I was saying the spiritual stuff is most likely the physics we haven't understood yet. But as we dis describe these new physics, all of a sudden it starts to make sense why people can remote heal and do all this stuff. Well, and right? products. I see all of these works as uh, vessels of uh, self. You know, like, what is the nature of the self? That's the question at the heart of all these pieces, I think. And so here, uh, the, the fusion of God and self, I think, is the point of religion. It's the point of spirituality, that we want to bring ourselves into alignment with divinity. And so here it's positing that there is a networked self, that there is only one of us here, and that we're a node of infinite awareness. And Tool uh, got, a, got a hold of this uh, image. Adam asked me, well, uh, we were, tried to work out many different approaches to the 10,000 Days album, and finally I just said, well, I'm working on this in, in the studio, and he said, oh, yes, this is so, it, this is it. What are we it. doing here? We got a cue. It's three-dimensional, and what we're going to do is we're just going to lay this out in two dimensions. So you can just imagine we're going to take this face and this bottom and fold it down, and this one fold it over, and this one fold it over, and this one fold it up, and what do you got? So, let's just pump the brakes here. Let's take a step back, take another step back. So, the cube of Allah, the Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism, finds itself in Islam, and then all of a sudden we look in Islam at the Kaaba, and then we unfold it in two dimensions and we find Christianity. Seems like these faiths have a lot more in common than most of the people that are following these faiths really know. Somewhat later in my talk, I will suggest that Tesla, the uh, famous experimental scientist of the early 1900s, uh, stumbled onto this deep truth that frame and content are unified in the duality they are. And it was this understanding in a functional sense, though he may not, not have ever put it in so many words, that popped him out of a content only, which is a closed system understanding, and took him into a completely different universe entirely. For now, I want merely to emphasize that nothing is excluded from the description I am drawing as a description of this dualized frame content universe. So with that as a foundational starting point, let's begin to fill out this understanding of polarity, just to gain a small sense of kind of how it permeates everything that can be perceived and understood and experienced. Of course, because we have the capability to solve the problems. We have, the, we are developing the capability to go off our planet and to go beyond. And the evidence suggests that our extraterrestrial visitors who have been coming here for a long time have that capability. We just haven't developed it yet. And so our next step is to be able to go off our planet and to go beyond our planet and perhaps even go outside of our solar system. And as you well are, are well aware, there are uh, Elon Musk and, Brian and some of the good, great thinkers here and with the means to help do something are ex exploring off planet and, and exploring the ways to help us do that. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to get off this planet and go beyond it. And it made me remember who I really was and how there was actually this distinction between who I think I am and who I truly am. And only once I started to let go of who I think I was would I become who I truly was once again. 
back to my value. And so all to say, since this talk is about the illusions we create for ourselves, if I could leave you guys with anything before I go into my performance, it's to take a look at who you feel like you need to be, who you think you need to be, and to remember who you truly are. Because who you truly are is where your, your value is. So if you're stuck in life and you're trying to make things happen for yourself, but you keep getting blocked, chances are it's because you're devaluing yourself in some way. And how could life give you value if you're not valuing yourself? And so this is on its way and this is why I'm talking to you. I mean, of course, my laboratories have been working on a device similar to this, which I got incredible results very early on including results that show that it has a positive effect on life because of course if you're getting you know the Planck field where it's incoherent to all of a sudden become coherent if you get the smoothie going good you're made of that smoothie too so you're like when you're close to it it's like ooh, I feel energized you know your little Planck's are like yeah it's coherent around here, right? So it's technology that actually can lead to like extension of life, can lead to like incredible things. Incredible things. This is the next step for our evolution. We learn to control electromagnetic fields. Now we learn to control gravity. great works that year was going to be going to the North Magnetic Pole because I was exploring polarities and of course the North Magnetic Pole is in Canada and uh, so I wanted to come up to Resolute Bay and study the geomagnetic observatory and have an experience of where all the lines of force that uh, emanate from our geomagnetic earth are, uh, are coming down into the uh, polar desert there. So I saved up my money and I went to the North Magnetic Pole. Now, I now look at this as a, I was a 21 year old, sad artist, desperate and just exploring, experimenting. And I think that what I was really looking for was uh, orientation toward true north. And true north uh, is more of a spiritual concept. It's finding your orientation toward true spirit. But metaphorically, I guess here, uh, I was uh, using the north magnetic pole, the symbol of that, and what it does is move. It is not in the same location from day to day. The pole wanders. The thing that we depend on to get our bearings, you know, our compass, you know, it's always in motion. So, and, and it's been moving faster these days too, actually. But the, uh, at the time it moved a few degrees every year and I thought that that was fascinating. So I called the piece Polar Wandering and because that's the name of the phenomena. And I just want to say that in the, in the interest of how art evolves consciousness, our subject, that this very much in the performance realm takes the subjective, this feeling of disorientation, this feeling of wandering, and you know, it's very typical in the 20 something seeking, not finding, seeking, not finding. It's a very 20 something kind of passage. And so you went all the way. I mean, you, you objectified it by turning it into a performance, going to a place where you really didn't know where you were going, never had ever had any idea of what you were going to see or meet, and of putting it out as an object. And there you did it. Yeah. I figured I went all that way and everything. Uh, well, the, the, the sun was going around and around in a circle, and my compass needle was going around in a circle because I was in the place that all the compass needles point to. So I thought I should go around in a circle, and it was 30 below, but I did it anyway, and about uh, one round, I started to feel what I f imagined was the lines of force around the earth, and somehow I was, uniting with this force field 
and then I realized I couldn't feel my feet. In other words, Pi is a Logos active in, co in, in uh, Cosmos. Logos, the term Logos, is a Greek term. Now when the King James Holy Bible was translated, Logos means word, and so Logos means word. So when we hear of uh, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Well, what he's saying there is that this pi proportion, that is the Logos, is the word of God. Now we already know, science knows, and we know that mathematics is the language of God. So if God is speaking a word, is he speaking a word in Italian or Russian or is he speaking English? No, no, no. God's speaking the language of mathematics. So if God's speaking a word, what is he speaking? Well, according to Frank C. Higgins there, he's speaking the word of pi. Uh, here I want to take a dive into subtlety. So take a big breath. We are going to be diving deep and we'll return to the surface a little closer to the end of my presentation, perhaps a little dizzy. So let's begin. If you take this, pardon me, if you take the original circle, and now with your mind's eye, draw inside that circle this S line, so that you are drawing the yin-yang opposites within that circle. In drawing that line, what can occur to you and what will occur to you if you think about it is that by drawing a single line, you draw both yin and yang simultaneously. Nah. 